I'll wake up with a smile each day Positive for my mindset, don't oh, no. Put this smile on somebody's face In my own little way And I go dead there for you, my brother No need to feel alone Go dead there for one another But this is the journey we take Don't say I'll be here, I'll be here, I'll be here for you And I go that there for you, my sister You no need to shake We go that there for one another For this journey we did I go there for you You go there for me too yeah, We are a family, always there for one another. Join us. D Star, raising role models. Sami said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. One of the reasons we are glad anytime we gather at the in the presence of God is because we know that we serve a covenant keeping God. God is a God of covenant and we are sure once again that as long as earth remains, sea time and harvest, God's covenant is sure, right? Welcome to church. Welcome to Daystar Christian Center. It's the home of stars and mega stars. If you're just coming in, have your seats, okay? And please copy the link to that platform where you're joining us on and share with your friends and family. Let everybody in your circle join service today and let them testify to the goodness of God that is present and resident in this house this morning and evermore. All right, if you have done that, let's say a word of prayer before we join service. Father, we thank you. Thank you because you have gathered us again at your feet and we are confident that by yourself you will teach us in Jesus' precious name we've prayed. If anything strikes you during the course of the service, please share it with the hashtag Daystar online. Let's rise on our feet as we join the service. As we celebrate his awesomeness in the service, as we thank you for what he's done for us this morning. Can I get a witness in the house? Just wave your hands to the heavens. Wave it, wave it, wave it. You are not compelled to do it. Wave it as if you are appreciative of what God has done for you. Can you give God a shout of praise in the house? The shout inside is the winning side. Give God a shout. Generations after generations. Keep praising you. Yet no one shuts you up. Then I ask the Lord.
of you Oh, be lifted Above all of God Hiya! We lay our crowns And worship you Oh, be lifted Oh, be
receive our worship this morning father receive our worship this morning we will not be silent we will always worship you we pour our hearts to you in worship we rejoice in your goodness we celebrate you for your faithfulness, for who you are. You've been good to us. You preserve us in spite of every negative circumstances. So we will not be silent. Will someone lift his voice and celebrate our God this morning? 
Declare his goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are worshipped. Hallelujah. Psalm 89, verse 3 to 4, in the message translation says, You once said, I joined forces with my chosen leader. I pledge my word to my servant David, saying, Everyone descending from you is guaranteed life. I'll make your rule as solid as lasting rock. Now, this is the promise God gave to David and his family. This morning, as our custom is, as we pray for our nation and families, we're going to declare that our children are guaranteed life and that they shall rule their world. Let's open our mouth and begin to pray that prayer. Father, according to your promise, we tap into this promise that you've given and we declare that our children are guaranteed life. Wherever they go, you order their steps. You preserve them. You bless their going out. You bless their coming in. You cause them to excel in whatever they do. They will not fail. Our labor will not be in vain. We see them ascend because the scripture says the part of the just is like a shining light. Scripture says you will teach our children and great shall be their peace and great shall be our peace. I want us to pray for those of them that are writing in Nigeria, the university uh, matriculation ed, uh, exam. Let's pray that God will help them to succeed even as they write this week. And as children resume school tomorrow, commit them into God's hand that within this next term, that they will excel in school. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because our children are preserved. To you be all the glory. Just speak a word over yourself and over your week. It shall be well with you. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Lord, your word will be fulfilled in our nation. It will be fulfilled in our families. Our children are blessed. They excel in whatever they do. In the name of Jesus. For those of them resuming school in Nigeria from tomorrow, we declare that their trips to school and back are safe. Those in the boarding house, they are protected. Those of them writing uh, the university matriculation exams, you will help them to excel. Thank you, eternal Father. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together and celebrate the God that answers prayers. I want to say welcome to everyone, both in person and online. Welcome to church. Shall we welcome all our members that are sitting by you? Just welcome them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right. Is this our Christian center? We call it the home of stars and mega stars. And we have just assigned one assignment from God and it's captured in our vision statement which is to raise role models god promised us that when you are part of our services our training system our small groups consistently for a period of three months and you do the things that are taught in these various uh, uh through these various platforms you will so touch you transform your life within a period of three months there will be changes that others can see our services are streaming live on the social media platforms and on our main platform live.daystar.ng.org we are on YouTube, TikTok, we are on Facebook, we are on radio, that's Daystar F, uh, Daystar NG .org forward slash Daystar FM. And the services are also on demand, so at any point in time during the week, you can go through it all by yourself. Please do remember to also be part of our Daystar Academy, our Life Development School, and also our Home Fellowship, which you can access by uh, on the website daystarng.org forward slash small group we encourage everyone also that across the world you can join any of our communities online or our hybrid cells that are in lagos and its environment okay if it's your first time of being part of our service and you are online we want to celebrate you now let's put our hands together and celebrate our online guests we want to say thank you for logging in from wherever you are it may be in the morning or afternoon or evening where you are the grace of god 
we reach you wherever you are. Please check in the chat room on the platform where you are. You see a link there. Leave us your details. We want to keep praying for you and want to send you some of our materials and stay in touch with you. Thank you for being part of the service. In this service, in this auditorium, or in any of our physical location, there are also those joining us for the first time. Can I see a show of hand if it's your first time at Desa right here you are you're here where are they can you rise up just rise on your feet yes thank you sir stand 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 please you are the one we are clapping for can we uh, increase the volume of the clap someone needs to shake them give them a a warm hug and let them feel the love of God thank you officials are trying to give you a pack once you receive that pack you may please have your seat there's a white card in that pack that's the only thing you are not to take home please fill that uh white card the guest card and either drop it on your seat we'll pick it after the service or leave it with one of our officials we want to keep praying for you we will even visit you if you indicate on that card god bless you and we hope you come again and again in jesus mighty name amen hallelujah Okay, it's time to do something that some of us are used to now. We want to check in and check on our friends uh, that are at home or else we are to be sure that they are in church. So right now, will you please bring out your phone? What we're going to do is that you're going to take yourself a selfie with people who are around you and you're going to post it on your favorite um, social media platform and ask them to join the service. Are we ready? Okay, I have my own here. Let's go okay so i'm taking it are you doing yours right okay yes three two and one i got you <laughs> hallelujah all right so let's start posting it and when you post it please put hashtag this online and also tag this ng is that okay is that okay? All right, glory to God. Let's listen to the following announcements before we take our testimony. Who knows what's happening next Sunday? Yes? Oh, they don't even know. Is this Star Worship Experience 2024? Put your hands together and celebrate God. Just prepare and come. And as you are coming, don't come alone. Please invite everybody, both those you love and those that are your enemies. If there are any, God will bless them. The healing streams of God, the praise team are already. It will be hot in this place. Hallelujah. Today, there is water baptism by immersion. Um, is a symbolization that we have accepted the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So, if you are ready for that, if you've not been baptized by immersion and you are prepared for it, please, um, 1 p.m. today, I hope you, if you are ready for it, if you came for it, make sure you have your extra cloth so that um, you can change up after the baptism. It holds at our baptistry by Annex 2. Induction of new members will take place during this service. So if you've completed your membership school, this is for you. Just get ready in a few minutes from now. We'll be doing just that. And then, this Star Leadership Academy holds this Tuesday is a hybrid module. If you've not registered, you can still register. DaystarNG.org. No, Daystar. No, DLA Online. Dot org. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're going to be taking our testimony right now. Uh, let's get ready to take this testimony. Before it comes up, we want to encourage you. If you have testimony, you want to share it, we'll record it. All you need to do is get to the information center after service and you'll be directed on what next to do. Let's have the testimony of what God is doing in our midst. I was on my way to Wari in Delta State, Nigeria. The journey was going smoothly and we had just left Benin, descending, entering into the Benin Bypass. And all of a sudden, the axle of the vehicle broke. There was this loud sound and the driver lost control of the vehicle. Um, normal for human beings to panic. So 
other passengers were shouting, screaming, different instructions to, to the driver. And he was actually trying to get a grip of what was really happening. At that point, I looked at the driver. I was looking at the driver, looking at the road, just to make sure that there were no oncoming vehicles. And then I just knew that, okay, this guy is not going to be able to control this vehicle. Everything is in God's hands now. So I just muttered, thank you, Jesus. And I closed my eyes. But by the time we came to a halt, I opened my eyes, I looked around. It was dusty and all, right? But I tried to open the, the, the door by my right, just by my side. It was very difficult to open. And then I saw that the window opposite me was open and I kind of squeezed myself out through, through that window. That was when I saw what had just really happened, that I had just survived a very ghastly accident. So right now, I don't see myself as the one living anymore. I see myself as having a second chance at life and every minute, every second, let God just do whatever I want to do in this body because it's no more mine. A new person came out of that vehicle and it's, it's not the fair God that was in the vehicle that left me. God has given me another chance at life and I'm very grateful for this deliverance from death. Hallelujah! At this side, the world is still working wonders. According to the word of the Lord, through our pastor, death will see you and will be paralyzed. Will you bow your head as we pray and receive the word? Father, we thank you as you sent your word this Sunday. Your word will give us direction. Your word will give us inspiration. Your word will heal us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Will you put your hands together as we receive God's servant, our senior pastor, live. <laughs> Come on, do it very well. <laughs> Whoa. Wow, wow, wow. Hey. <clears throat> Wow, wow, wow. Please let's have a seat. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. How have you been? Blossoming supernaturally. <laughs> Blossoming. Oh, thank you. Miss you too, big time. <laughs> Whoa. Well. God has been faithful. Has God been good to you? Yes. Wasn't that a powerful testimony? Yes. Ah, wow. Wow. <laughs> Someone came out of that car. Thank you, Fego, for sharing your testimony with us. And I know there are many more testimonies that we're not sharing today. But because God is faithful, I know the testimonies are there. So if God has been good to you, will you give him another big hand clap and a shout? Yes! Our God is good. He's faithful. Our God is faithful. Lord, we're grateful. He said he will give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their arms so that you will not stumble. The blood of the lamb, the Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, will continually speak for you. Amen. And like it was in Egypt, when, any, when death comes close to you, it will see the blood of Christ and pass over. You go out of your home safely. Amen. You come back safely. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
All right, let's do something quickly before we share the word. So at Daystar Christian Center, we have a training program. And we tell people that's where the real change happens in Daystar. We call it the Daystar Academy. And it has various schools, the membership school, the maturity school, ministry school, and the mission school. Taking you from one level of commitment to Christ to the other. And equipping you to build your character like Christ, to build competence like Christ, to be a problem solver, a solution provider in our world. And to keep your focus permanently on touching other people's lives. So we have in the service today people who have been through the membership school and today we are admitting them into membership in Daystar. The fact that somebody attends churches on Sundays or any other day in Daystar does not make you a member of Daystar. It makes you an attendee. We consider for us we are still window shopping. And after looking through the window, we expect you to come in through the door, right? <laughs> yeah, checking out, is this church okay, da, 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 da. Well, the one thing you know about us is that we are absolutely clear. We have clarity about what God called us to do. And it's about people. You've heard that we call this star the home of stars and mega stars. Yes, it's a star production factory. This star is a mega star production factory. <laughs> so I, I want to very specially commend everyone who decided to go into the membership school and who went through all of the training. And today we have our membership induction and all of us are going to receive them into membership. Is that okay? Yes. All right. So in this time we have what we call the membership pledge. Hmm? So first, I want to be sure that everyone that is a part of the induction today has received a copy of the membership pledge. If you haven't, please do raise your hand and we'll make sure you get one because you've got to get one, okay? Good. Yeah, if you're anywhere in the service, they are seated uh -huh, here. So if you're meant to be a part of this and you're anywhere else, we encourage you, please come and enjoy them as we go through this. No, somebody's air may stand up. Pledge. Pledge. Uh, pledge. Pledge to God. <laughs> when you get the paper, you will see every statement there is gotten from the Bible. And we put the reference there where we got it from. I'm saying that because I, I, I'm laughing, remembering the first time ever that I took people through this in 1999, 25 years ago. So when I announced next Sunday, we're going to take the last class. After the last class, those who want to be members will take the membership pledge. Hey! If you see the rumor that was flying around that, that week, hey, Pastor Sam said they are going to take pledge. Hey, they are turning this time into a cult. Hey! <laughs> So if you're a part of this, if you just completed the membership school and you're stepping, taking one bold step into membership today, can you please stand to your feet? God bless you. Let's give them a big God bless you. Wow. Whoa. You know one amazing thing? People tell me in town, when you meet a Daystar member, you know that there's a way they talk, there's a way they think. A pastor in Canada attended a training that I ran December last year in Atlanta on church growth for pastors. He said, I had to come. I've been listening to you, watching all your videos. He said, why? He said, we, we got some workers. He said, I just noticed the first one, the second one, a couple, and so on. He said, and they are different. He said, they are the highest quality workers I have right now. <laughs> he said, and I found out the thing common to them is that they're all from Daystar. He said, if it was just one person out of them or two, I would have said, oh, those people are different. He said, it is consistent. 
So he said, I told myself there must be a deliberate system that produces people like that. And so it's, that's why he flew all the way from Canada to attend the training. So um, I want to say a big thank you for taking this step. Of course, I believe that you will also take the maturity class and the ministry class. And, uh, uh, make, we no, make we no run from school right, <laughs> before we finish. All right, will you please hold your pledge? <clears throat> and we're going to go together. The Daystar Membership Pledge. Let's go. Having received Christ as my Lord and Savior and being baptized and being in agreement with Daystar's strategy and structure, I now feel led by the Holy Spirit to unite with the Daystar Church family. I therefore commit myself to God and the other members to do the following. I will protect the unity of my church by following the leaders, by acting in love toward other members, by refusing to gossip. I will share the responsibilities of my church by praying for its growth, by inviting the unsaved to attend, by warmly welcoming those who visit. I will serve the ministry of my church by developing a servant's heart, by discovering my gifts and talents, by submitting to training by my pastors. I will support and uphold the testimony of my church by attending the services faithfully, by living a godly Christian life, by giving my financial and material resources sacrificially towards the spread of the gospel. In Jesus' name, Amen. let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful. We're grateful that you are the one that set up this church. Day Star, this Day Star Christian Center is not a man's idea. It is a God idea. It is your idea. And that you are still speaking to people today, 29 years after, to join themselves to this vision. Because it is a vision that is changing people's lives. So today, as a church, we thank you for our brothers and sisters who have just taken the pledge to become registered members of this church. This church, Heavenly Father, you led us to covenant with you the night before our inauguration that we would only do what you tell us to do. And you promised to do your part, to bless us. And over the years, we have seen you fulfill your promises. Today, <laughs> we thank you because the way you work, the worker that is recruited one hour to the end of the day gets the same thing as the person that came from the morning. I ask Heavenly Father, every blessing you ever released on this church, credit it into their accounts. Yeah. Every prophecy pronounced on us, every blessing released on us, activate them in their lives. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, stars shine. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, multiply their influence. Yeah their capacity for impact. Make them a blessing. Make them anointed solution providers in the name of Jesus Christ. There's one thing you blessed us with, Heavenly Father. When people come here, they say, I have clarity about my life now. I now have direction about my life. I pray, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that they will never be stranded. At every point that they need to make decisions, wisdom will flow to them. And then, Heavenly Father, thank you because you will help them to uphold your testimony. Amen. Multiply their capacity for love. Amen. Enlarge their hearts. Amen. Enlarge their capacity. Amen. And then use them. Amen. Lord, we enjoy financial blessing in this church. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask, let it be a new dimension. Amen. We have received the oath that you pronounced on Abraham. You said, I, by myself, I swear 
in blessing, I bless you. So I say, Father, whatever may happen in this economy, or even the global economy, cause them to flourish. And then we ask that your power will sustain their health. They and their families. Your power will preserve them supernaturally. And they will live to fulfill your assignments for their lives. So, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Because we know these prayers are answered. And it is a new beginning in their lives. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So you will sign the pledge, right? But we are not conducting it. You will take it home. And you stick it where you can see it every day to remember the pledge that you made to God <laughs> and to everybody that you will not gossip. <laughs> So on behalf of all members of Daystar Christian Center worldwide, we welcome you to the Daystar Church family. <laughs> okay, I, I know you are together, but you will, on my behalf, help me to shake the next person. Say, welcome to the family. <laughs> okay, if you are not far from them, you can please stand up and help me to shake their hands. Welcome to the family. Right. All right. Thank you. Please let's have our seats. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Lord. So it's really beautiful to see you again, physically, live. <laughs> and I assure you that Pastor Nika and I pray for you every day. Amen. Jesus said, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. So as much as we would love to own this, that we cannot. <laughs> grateful Bishop Edipo, I'm grateful Bishop Edipo told me many years ago at the beginning, when I felt like, you know, I will ask him, just pray for me. <laughs> that I felt the church was not growing. He said, well, the, he said, the, one of the first things you have to settle is the ownership of that church. He said, only one person made the claim, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He said, the day you claim that it is your church, just know that that's the day you have signed up to confront the gates of hell. Yeah, because whoever claims ownership of the church is the one that has to take care of the gates of hell. So you better resolve the ownership of that church. So from that day, I signed out. <laughs> it is the church of Jesus, amen. Uh, the promises God made will be fulfilled. Because this is a pioneering church. And we are not only about now. We are about God's eternal purposes. So God will empower you to fulfill his destiny for your life. And it will be without stress. In Jesus' name. We've been discussing about the covenant. Blossoming through the covenant. Why? Because God told us that we are blossoming this year, and he's showing us how. We've got to remember that primarily our relationship with God is built around a covenant, a blood covenant, the highest form of agreement known ever in heaven and on earth. Jeremiah 33, verses 23 to 26. So by the way, if you've been attending services in Daystar, you've not been to the membership school, please watch out for the dates for the next one. Stop picking from the outside. Step inside. It's a different look altogether. Amen. <laughs> All right. Jeremiah 33, verses 23 to 26, Message Bible. God's message to Jeremiah. Have you heard the saying that's making the rounds? The two families God chose, Israel and Judah, he disowned. And have you noticed that my people are treated with contempt, with rumors and food, that there's nothing to them anymore? People spreading rumor. God has abandoned them. Da, da, da. Well, here's God's response. If my covenant with day and night wasn't in working order, if sky and earth weren't functioning the way I set them going, then, but only then, you might think I had disowned the descendants of Jacob and of my servant David, and that I wouldn't set up any of David's descendants over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
But as it is, I will give them back everything they've lost. The last word is, I will have mercy on them. Yeah. This is God saying, the day Satan becomes powerful enough to stop the sun from rising, stop it from setting, stop the way I set <laughs> the constellations, you know, the planetary bodies to work, the day Satan is able to stop them from working like that, that day you accept there is a power that can stop me from fulfilling my promises. Uh, so whenever I wake up in the morning, every single day, once I see the sun rose today, I tell myself, the devil that will stop God's promises from being fulfilled in my life has not yet been invented. So I prophesy on someone here today, whatever it is that is contrary to God's word, God's promise, God's design for your life, it is buried. Amen. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, the grass with us, the flower fades, but the word of our God abides forever. The grass with us, the flower fades. So anything that is contrary to the word of God is grass. It's flower. And look at the words used, wither, fade. So it's a process. So some things will change instantly. Some things, it will be a process. But from the moment revelation, what God said is introduced into the situation, whatever it is Satan is doing is on its way out. I prophesy on someone here today, whatever they call that sickness, I destroy it by its root. Yeah. It dies. Yeah. Your restoration begins now. Amen. And for someone, your healing is now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So remember that a blood covenant makes you one with God. That was what we said last week. A, a covenant with God changes your status. You become one with God. Listen, as a Christian, if you don't know anything else, if you can hold that thought in your mind, I promise you, you will never operate with fear. Hold that thought in your mind. Like Jesus said in John 10 verse 30, I and my father are one. That's why I quote Galatians 2.20 to myself almost every day. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet it's no longer I that live. It is Christ that lives in me. The life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Once I remind myself of that, fear just disappears. It's not me. The old me is dead. That's the essence of baptism. The old me is buried. This new me, it is Christ. It's looking like me on the outside, but it is Christ living his life through me. So I just mutter to myself, anywhere it is, wherever it is that I'm meeting, just say, Lord, in Jesus' name, they will not hear me. It is you they will hear. They will not see me. It is you they will see. Whatever cannot be refused you will not be refused me. See, whatever Christ will attract, that is what I attract. It makes life easy, isn't it? Blood covenant with God changes your status. Changes, it goes deep down to change your sense of identity. But don't forget, right from the first message, we established something. God's motive for entering into a covenant with man is love. And we said, if you miss that, your relationship with God will be built on religion. And you've signed into a hard life. Hard life of trying and trying to please God. Trying to be accepted with God. When he loved you already, and accepted you through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. So the motive is love. We've got to learn to accept God's love for us. He loves us with a reckless love. Our focus today, though, is on our own side of the equation. Hmm. There is an obligation on our own part to love God back. Amen. Amen. To love God back. There is an obligation on our part to love God back. When they asked Jesus Christ,
Christ. In Matthew 22, you read verses 37 to 40, which is the greatest commandment. He said, love the Lord your God. Love God. He said, and love your neighbor as yourself. He said, on these two hang all the law and the prophets. You can summarize the whole Bible in that statement. Love God. So why, why shouldn't that be our priority? To get this covenant to work, you must be a God lover. The question on my mind this morning is, where are the God lovers of our generation? I know there are God seekers. In fact, I know that the conversation mostly in the church right now is on what we can get out of God. The breakthrough, the blessing, the, that's the focus. And I say, sorry, a covenant does not work like that. A covenant does not work. This one is built on love. And love is not self-focused. Love is other-centric. For God so loved the world, not loved himself. Right? So God loves us. We have an obligation to love him back. And I was just doing a study through the week on the God lovers in the Bible. Of course, Abraham comes there, high on the list. And in James chapter 2, verse 23, New Living Translation, James 2, 23, it says, And so it happened, just as the scriptures say, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. Isaiah 41, verse 8, New Living Translation, Isaiah 41, verse 8, God speaking. But as for you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, my chosen one, descended from Abraham, my friend. God <laughs> called Abraham his friend. They had an unusual relationship. Which is the greatest commandment? You shall love the Lord your God with all your soul and all your mind and all your might, all your strength. I'm then asking myself, okay, so what is the proof that somebody loves God? How do I love God? How do I love God? If I asked you now, in this service now, how would you know if someone really loves God? Will it not be that when it's time for worship, the person is lost in worship and that tears are streaming down the person's face? Is it possible that the person that is singing and tears are streaming like, like that is disobeying God? So the real proof is the obedience. <laughs> John 14 verse 15, New Living Translation. John 14, 15. Jesus speaking, if you love me, Obey my commandments. If you love me, obey my commandments. Move down to verse 21. John 14, verse 21, New Living Translation. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them. My Father will love them. And I will love them <laughs> and reveal myself to each of them. Amen. Those who accept my commandments and obey them, hey, those are the ones that are, those are the ones that love me. That's amazing, isn't it? So, Abraham's love for God was marked by a deep commitment to God and a deep commitment to obey God. Ah! Reckless love for God is expressed through reckless obedience. God caught a covenant with Abraham, motivated by love, remember? And God powered Abraham's body and Sarah's body, and they produced a child after their bodies had lost the capacity to produce a child. When God loves you, you are unstoppable. And then somewhere along the line, Genesis 22, the Bible says, and God tested Abraham. What was the test? About? It was a test of love. I've shown you so much love, Abraham. Do you love me back? Will you love me? Take your son, your only son, and take him to a mountain that I will show you and sacrifice him there. 
God was not out to murder the boy. It was just a test. I love you. Will, is this thing supposed to be one, one way, one-sided? Do you love me? And Abraham took the boy and was about to slash his throat. My utmost commitment is to you. You've loved me so much. You gave me what I could never have produced on my own. So why should I even hold on to it? Whatever it is you say you want, we entered into this agreement. I will do my part. And God stopped Abraham. And then God said this in Genesis 22 from verse 15. Genesis 22 from verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called again to Abraham from heaven. This is what the Lord says. Because you have obeyed me. You can substitute that with love, right? Because you've loved me. He says, and have not withheld even your son, your only son. I swear by my own name that I will certainly bless you. I will multiply your descendants beyond number like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. Your descendants will conquer the cities of their enemies and through your descendants all the nations of the earth will be blessed. All because you have obeyed me or you can say you have loved me. Ah uh ah. -uh. Ah uh ah. -uh. Someone loved God, impressed God to the point where God had to use human language. I swear. And you read Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 13. He says, men resolve issues by swearing. And when you swear, you swear by a higher power. He said, God wanting to show the immutability of his counsel, the fact that it, is, it has become impossible for me not to fulfill this promise. See, he came down to speak human language. When he now got to swearing, who was he supposed to swear by? There's no one higher by than him. So he swore by himself. <laughs> swear. When you get to that point, I say again, the devil that will stop you has not been invented. And God swears. That's what God did with Abraham. That's why we're still talking about the man. It, it was thousands of years ago. Thousands of years ago. Maybe like 4,000 years or so. We're still talking about him. Where are the God lovers of our generation like that? That 4,000 years from now, they will still be calling your name. Your life will be a reference point for those that want to love God. That's the call today. Which is the greatest commandment? Love the Lord your God. Abraham did it. Will God find those people in this star? That's the big question on my mind today. God love us. So, thousands of years later, Christ will demonstrate that same love for God. Let me pick a few verses. John 14, verse 31, New Living Translation. John 14, 31. Christ speaking. But I will do what the Father requires of me, so that the world will know that I love the Father. He said, come, let's be going. You want, oh, why did Jesus die? Say, so, oh, to save the sins of the world. Mm, that's secondary. Because he loved the Father. And he wanted to help the Father fulfill his agenda of reconciling the world to himself. Was it convenient? No. He said, Lord, if it is possible, can you let this go pass? Can we find another route to organize the salvation of man? And the father said, sorry, my grace is sufficient for you. There's no other route. I will give you grace to go through. He said, fine, not my will, but your will. If that's what is uppermost on your mind, I'm in. If that's what matters to you, I'm in. He said, so that the world will know that I love the father. Where are the God lovers of our generation? Our focus today is on what to get from him. The getting, don't worry. When Christ sacrificed his life, did he not get? God fulfilled his own part. What if God did not raise him from the dead? That's the biggest risk anybody could take. But God fulfilled his part. God will fulfill his promises in your life. On the third day, God raised him from dead. Forever. To show you can't love God and fail. 
Did Paul not say it in 1 Corinthians 13? Everything else can fail. He said, love never fails. Where are the God lovers of our generation? That will forgive someone, not because the person apologized, but because God said so. That will forgive their husband, forgive their wife. Where is the God lover of our generation of a man that will love his wife, not because he's behaving right, but because God said to do so? That's what I'm talking about. Anyone wanting to make life easy for you is deceiving you. This is the real love. <laughs> when we were to get married, Pastor Nick and I, um, we agreed to read the Bible for just find passages on marriage and then we'll come together, discuss those passages. So that's how I was reading Ephesians 5. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. I said, ah. I don't need encouragement. I'm crazy about her. Right now, Holy Spirit. Ah. The girl, fine. <laughs> the Spirit said, continue now. I said, okay. Husbands, love your wives. As Christ also loved the church. I said, yes. How did he love the church? And gave himself for, I said, ah. My mood just changed. Said, he died. The Holy Spirit said, yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So where, where are the God lovers in our generation that would love their wives because God said so? He says, if you know what she did to me, if you know what he did to me, when God said forgive, it was not based on any condition, it was not based on anybody's behavior. He said, leave the vengeance to me. He said, if you come to, Jesus said, if you come to the altar, you want to offer any sacrifice. He says, you remember your brother has something against you. He said, leave whatever it is on the altar. Go and make up with your brother before you come. John the apostle will explain later in 1 John chapter 4. You cannot say that you love God and not love man. How can you say you love God that you cannot see? Is that not easy? When you don't love your brother that you can see. 1 John 4, 20, 21, he explained it. The way they understood it when Jesus explained the, first, the highest commandment and the next one. He said this was what Christ meant. That anyone that loves God must love his brother also. Where are the God lovers in our generation that will be willing to do what is not popular because God said so? The crave for validation is too much. It's too much. We've carried, we've carried it even online. With social media. And that's why the depression level is going up. How many likes? They did not like my post. He liked my post. Our identity is now tied to external factors. Not to who God said we are. Habba. Who is willing to love God, to obey God, to do those things that other people will consider as failure? Think about it. How did people see the death of Christ? Famous, popular minister, crowd puller, killed like chicken on the cross. They mocked him, they taunted him. They said, ah, but you said you were powerful now. If you are as powerful as you said you are, if you are the son of God, come down now, or God. Ah, ah. So all this preaching you were doing, all this was bobo. <laughs> it was public failure. But see his own perspective to it. He saw it as love for the Father. Was it not justified later? So in the bid to please people, and that's why it's difficult to change culture. Who wants to run against the crowd? Who wants to run against it and be unpopular? I play the scenario of biblical stories, right, to fully understand them in their situation then. I play Noah and the building of the ark. Hey, if there was TV, radio, Newspapers. In the days of Noah, it will, it will be front page news. 
they would situate journalists with cameras permanently in front of that act. Today is day number 103 <laughs> that Mr. Noah has been building his act. He says it's going to rain. It has never rained on the earth before. Some experts are saying that Mr. Noah are delusional. Let's bring in Professor So-and-so, who is an expert in psychiatry, right? And that one will give his expert opinion that when somebody is behaving the way Mr. Noah is behaving, he is suffering from paranoia and has hallucination. He is hearing voices. When somebody is hearing voices, that is stage two. <laughs> and then at the end of the day, the man is justified and everybody perishes in the flood. That's what I'm saying. Where are the God lovers of our own generation? I know it's difficult in our part of the world. And when you grow up as an African, be conscious about it. When you see a tree, look at the soil around it. Everything in that soil is in that tree. The tree did not get its body from heaven. That's our culture is. You absorb it as you are growing. And you have to, be, and you have to reflect and have self-awareness and ask yourself, what is it in the culture that has been part of my upbringing? And what potential limitations are they imposing on my work with God? And the one thing I will warn you about as an African is the fight for survival. Remember Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Lowest level, level one, food and drink. Level two, safety and security. Level three, love and belonging. Level four, self-respect and self-esteem. Level five, self-actualization. Purpose, meaning, fulfilling your why. The first two levels are material. From level three, they are intangible. And the parts of the world that are strong in innovation and creativity are the ones that have solved levels one and two at a national level. Because Maslow said, until you resolve one level, you are not fully conscious of the next one to pursue it. This fight for survival is like a curse. And there's a reason why in Acts chapter 2, as soon as the day of Pentecost started, New Testament church was created, they went after food distribution. Notice from Acts 2. Because James the Apostle explained in James chapter 2, don't tell someone who has not met his basic needs, be warmed and be filled. Okay. You are wasting your time. Yeah. People are asking, why are there so many churches? Why is the country not changing? People have no eating. You, you, there's a Yoruba proverb that says it. The hunger cannot enter into someone and another discussion will be able to enter there. Am I correct? In my transliteration. That's why they start prioritizing food distribution. Forget your teaching. So, but what did Jesus say in Matthew 6? Don't worry about your life. What to eat, what to drink, what to put on. Your heavenly father knows you have those things. After those things, Gentiles seek. Sadly, those things that Gentiles are supposed to seek, those are the main topics for our preaching now in the Nigerian church. There are kinds of people who will not be able to produce as long as we stay on that survival level. Did you notice love is level three? It's level three, intangible. And it is love we are talking about today. That's why I'm shouting. Where are the God lovers of our generation that will step up from level of looking for car, looking for this, looking for that? I, I see even young men that are supposed to have been married that are not married. Why are you not married? Uh, one needs to settle down first. One needs to, uh, when will you catch up with all this inflation that is going on? Your calculation has been disrupted. <laughs> how about marrying because God said so? Because that's how we got married now. He said, don't worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will put on. You said that's the one you are waiting for. So that's why after you now do the marriage, before long you say you are tired. Because whenever any small argument comes up, 
It's not God's purpose you are thinking about. What does God want to get out of this marriage? Malachi chapter 2, read it. Verse 16, it says, God wants godly offspring. The most valuable asset on this planet is the human being. God set up the family to produce them, right? But then you, you, are, you are not even seeing God anymore. It is bitterness now. It is anger. It is this, 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 this rudeness. Is too, I'm going to deal with you. I'm the one you are talking to like that. Da, 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 da. Where did you put God? Yeah. When you're a God lover, to be her. I've married you, I've married you. If you like, turn your head upside down. You like. <laughs> After all the drama, you better calm down. <laughs> We're in this together. What were you even we quarreling about God? <laughs> then you'll find that it's nothing. Satan entered into inside and was doing misinterpretation of what each person was saying. <laughs> all these, oh, is somebody in your family is this one. It, it's a complete waste of time. Marriage by Christian is spiritual warfare. Satan wants to scatter it before you even start it. Where are the God lovers? Who will put God's purposes first? That's where you will enjoy victory in spiritual warfare. Amen. Amen. Please bow your head with me. Let me stop shouting. I say I should not stop. Let me stop shouting. <laughs> Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for your love for me. Demonstrated through the death of Jesus on the cross. If you could give Jesus, what else can you not give me? My life can't be about material things. Help me to prioritize my love for you. Help me to appreciate the sacrifices you have made for me. Help me to be permanently convinced that I am loved. Permanently convinced that I am loved. And I realize I, I don't have the capacity to respond to your love. So I ask the Holy Spirit to help me to love you, to help me to obey you, to help me to be passionate about you. David killed Goliath not because he wanted to be famous, but because he loved you. He was angry. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to defy the armies of God? To David, it was not the army of Saul. It was the army of God. And Lord, because he loved you, he's the one you gave the victory. Heavenly Father, help me to bring down giants. Help me to confront the things that confront people in my generation. Make me a solution provider. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we cannot thank you enough for your love for us. It's beyond our comprehension, but we thank you all the same. And today, Heavenly Father, we sign up to be God lovers in our generation, the ones you can count on to fulfill your plans and purposes. Sometimes it will be convenient, sweet, joyful. Some other times it may be tough. But today, Heavenly Father, in Daystar Christian Center, and for everyone that is joining us and listening to this message, we say, Father, accept us as the God lovers of our generation. <clears throat> and Father, what we noticed in your word is that the God lovers in the Bible were extremely blessed. The things other people were pursuing after, you took care of those things on their behalf. Heavenly Father, use us as proof that you keep your covenant. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Let your oneness with us manifest. Whatever was harassing anyone, we shut them down today. Whatever seemed to be overwhelming us, Father, we declare their power is broken. We are one with you and you cannot be cursed. So we declare the cycle of failure is destroyed. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for the person who is a part of the service who says, but I don't even have a relationship with God. Where do I start from? I can't say that I'm a God lover. I'm a sinner. My relationship with God is not okay. Lord, we thank you because that's why you sent Jesus to die. And he paid already for our sins. You just want us to ask for forgiveness. So as we pray, I thank you because your forgiveness is here. 
just before we conclude the prayer, if you're that honest person, can you please put your hand, your hand on your heart? You may be at our, our physical location. You may be online. You may be in the hotel. I want God to forgive my sins. Can you put your hand on your heart as we say this prayer together? Please say this prayer after me. Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. I ask you to forgive me and to accept me as your child. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, we're grateful. Because Jesus said there is joy in heaven among the angels when this happens, when the sinner repents. You go into celebration mode. So we're grateful because their sins are forgiven. Not only that, you've removed the nature of sin from them and put your own nature in them now. So we just ask one thing, Heavenly Father, teach them to know you personally and teach them to love you the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap for these people. God bless you. God bless you. While we were praying, our officials gave you a card. Please fill it with accurate information. If you're at any of our physical locations, just fill it with accurate information right away. When we close the service in a few minutes, just leave the card on your seat. We'll pick it up. We have very helpful information to send to you. This blessing that you just got, Satan understands it even more than you do. He will do everything after this service to take it from you. That's why getting that information is important, okay? So please fill the card right away. If you're a part of the service online, there's a link in the chat room. There's a QR code on the screen. Just fill the form. Give us your information. We'll send what we have to you via email. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo. Your walk with God will be sweet. In the name of Jesus Christ. All right, it's time for us to give. So it's part of our covenant obligations because it is in God's word. So we do it because we love God, right? <laughs> so the information is coming on the screen. And what most of us in this start do is decide from the beginning of the year when we're planning our year, we decide on the proportion that we're going to give God. So some do 10%, some do more, some do less, fine. Uh, the one other thing we're committed to doing at every single point is obeying God. So in spite of whatever it is you may have decided, we also obey God by time. Let's pray as we give. Heavenly Father, we're grateful. Everything we have, you gave us. So we do this because we love you. And we do this because your house takes care of people. Helps to express your love to those that don't have. So we thank you that as we give, you will also continue to do your own part. Provision for us is guaranteed. So this week, there will be new testimonies. Amen. Yes, Heavenly Father. Those being owed money, somebody is going to pay supernaturally. Amen. Those owing money, somebody is going to be empowered to knock out debt. Amen. And there will be open doors, new opportunities. We will attract resources we never attracted before. Amen. In Jesus' name. Someone say a good amen. 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 All right, just before I run, so, um, we're approaching this blossoming thing. Like I said, God is teaching us how to access it. <laughs> Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be what? Added. So for us, we've made a commitment to win souls. To bring more people into God's house. Two Saturdays ago, right? We were out. Some of us were out winning souls and it was exciting. So this year in Desta, we've decided we're pulling in tens of thousands of people. In a matter of weeks, we'll start campus outreaches. And they'll be big. So, but this is how it works. Success happens when opportunity meets preparation. Luke 5, 36 to 38, Jesus said, nobody pours new wine into old wine skin. One of the major reasons people don't get answers to prayer. What you are asking for, you don't have capacity to manage it. Jesus said you pour the new wine, the new wine will bust the wineskin. So wineskin is broken, wine is wasted. Heaven doesn't waste resources. So in this time we're making adjustments. 
to improve our capacity to receive the people that are coming. Amen? Amen. So one of those things we're doing, we're tweaking many things, but one of those things we're doing is coaching, mentoring, and engaging our young people to develop the capacity that God helped us de uh, to develop years ago to pull people in. So our young people are coming in to the main auditorium, and from today, they are running the third service. Right? God forbid that what God gave us should stop with us. Paul told Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.2, the things you've received from me, commit to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. There are four generations in that verse. Paul, transfer to Timothy. Then he says to Timothy, commit to faithful men. And he says, those faithful men will be able to teach others also. I pray in Jesus' name that Satan's attempt to destroy the younger generation in Nigeria will be frustrated. Amen. This revival we have enjoyed in this country the last 40, 50 years will not fizzle out with us. Amen. Instead, this younger generation that Satan wants to destroy even before they start, he will know that he messed with the wrong generation. Amen. They will be more ferocious, more effectful, effective, more powerful than us. And my prayer is that God will use this star to produce them. Amen. A new generation of mega stars. Amen. So in the next service, everything from start to finish will be conducted by our young people from Star Hub. The only thing is, I will do the preaching. <laughs> Please get ready. As we pull in tens of thousands of people, what it means is we are moving to a higher level of leadership, right? We will do mentoring, we will do coaching, we will produce a generation that God can use. Isn't it a beautiful thing that like Abraham, 4,000 years after you have gone, God is still using you as example to provide leadership for people. That's the kind of life I've decided to live. So trying to impress anybody now is out of the window. I want my life to be in alignment with God's eternal plans and purposes. And I'm praying God will raise many more people like that in this time. If you believe that with me, say a powerful amen. amen. Our Daystar Leadership Academy has an advanced certificate program running on Tuesday, hybrid. So it's going to be both physical and online. Just one day, two, from 2 p.m. to about 7 p.m. or so. So if you've done the basic certificate, please don't stop your leadership development. DLAonline.org. Please register and join us on Tuesday. And next Sunday, like you've had, something special is happening here. The God lovers are going to be worshiping God. Amen. We're going to be demonstrating love for God. It will show through songs. It will show through dancing, jumping up, rolling on the floor, anything you are led to do. Amen. The day star worship experience. And we'll be led by this beautiful, beautiful, and they're looking beautiful. Put your hands together. Let's receive the healing streams of God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. God love us all over this place. Receiving new strength this morning in Jesus' name. God, if you said it, you'll perform it. 
It may not be how I want you to But here's what I'll do I'm gonna wait on you
strength hey! They shall ride up Up on wings Like an eagle And soar They shall walk Not get weary They shall run And not faint That's what happens when you wait as you wait on him can you rise and say lord i believe believe. yeah that was wonderful right that was amazing right can we celebrate the best choir in the world the healing streams of god that was an amazing ministration and on that powerful note we've come to the end of the service and i know you you enjoyed the service right i know we are all fired up by the message that pastor priest and we will be lovers indeed in the name of jesus well, we have some guests in the house, and later on in the, in the service, welcome their guests. We want you to know that we love and appreciate you. If you're not seated when that was done, we want you to know we have something special for you. Please visit our information center, which is by the right. As you approach the final exit out of this facility, our officials will be there to meet with you and hand over to you a welcome pack. Please ask them questions in your heart, and most especially about the home cell. And our prayer is that you'll come again and again. On today's start becomes your church in the name of Jesus. And to our guests online, we want to say thank you for joining this, this service. We love and appreciate your presence with us online. And if it's your first time, our host has dropped the link. Kindly click on that link and furnish, furnish us with your details. We'd like to keep in touch with you and let you know more about Daystar. And the Lord bless you continually in the name of Jesus. And yes, to, um, to the newly inducted members... Um, can, we, can we give them a hand, give them a cele- celebrate them one more time? Congratulations one more time. So all the newly inducted members should please proceed to Annex 2B, which is Star Hub, immediately after this service to collect the certificates and also interact with your coordinator. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. And I believe we are anticipating next week, right? If you're ready for next week, can you make a shout out to the Lord? Yes, next week is our worship experience. Please let's push out all materials 
for the worship experience, share on your status, on your Facebook, on your WhatsApp. Let, ev- let everyone, let the world know something is happening tomorrow. Happening next week, I beg your pardon, not tomorrow, please. Oh. <laughs> something is happening next week, and as you all come and invite people, the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. And as we step into this week, the Lord will go with us in the name of Jesus. Crooked paths are made straight for us in the name of Jesus. Your love for God will be backed with obedience in the name of Jesus. Blossom into this new week. See you in the home cell. Thank you. For my mindset, don't oh, know. Put this smile on somebody's face in my own little way. Mm-hmm. And I go dead there for you, my brother. No need to feel alone. Go dead there for one another. But this is Johnny, where we take. Don't say I'll be here, I'll be here, I'll be here for you. And I will that there for you, my sister. You no need to shake. We go that there for one another. For this is your new way to I'll be there for you. You go there for me, too. We are a family, always there for one another. Join us. D-Star, Raising Role Models.